York is not for everybody. Some guys just can't handle it, whether it's the press, the attention, the expectations that you win every season. Perhaps more than any other organization, the Yankees have had a lot of guys that have signed big contracts and then totally failed. Now, it's not uncommon for most players when they come to New York to struggle for a little while while they're getting used to their new environment. But some guys just never put it together and never regain their previous form. Here are the top five Yankees' worst free agent signings. Number five, Kenny Rogers. Kenny Rogers is the perfect example of why you don't want to pay a pitcher based on how many wins they had. In 1995, Kenny Rogers was 17 and seven with the Texas Rangers, earning him a four-year, $20 million contract with the New York Yankees. Kenny Rogers was not a New York guy. He struggled all season long during his first year with the Yankees, culminating in a terrible World Series performance that put the Yankees in a 6-0 hole, a hole they would eventually climb out of, perhaps saving Kenny Rogers' job for 1997. However, he was terrible again. In the second year of his four-year contract, Kenny Rogers was just 6-7 with a 5.65 ERA, pitching 145 innings, walking 62, and striking out just 78 while yielding 18 home runs. He actually was traded from the Yankees twice, first to the San Diego Padres in a deal for Greg Vaughn, a deal that was negated after Greg Vaughn failed his physical, and then he was traded to the Oakland A's before the 1998 season for Scott Brocious. Now both of those trades would have worked out fine. Scott Brocious won the World Series MVP in 1998, but Greg Vaughn also hit 50 home runs in 1998. Kenny Rogers went on to have a pretty nice career, proving that he just couldn't handle New York, a fact that was further exemplified when he walked in the winning run of the National League Championship Series with the Mets. Number four, the Titan from Cuba, Jose Contreras. Jose Contreras was one of the most sought after international free agents of all time. The Yankees actually rented out an entire hotel to prevent any other scouts from being able to negotiate with Jose Contreras. Nonetheless, Boston wanted him pretty badly, and when the Yankees signed him, they were crowned the evil empire. But Contreras never quite became the pitcher that was expected. He appeared in just 18 games in 2003, going 7-2 with a 3.30 ERA, but then it all fell apart in 2004, and he was traded to the White Sox. He was 8-5 with a 5.64 ERA in 18 starts before being dealt. He did have a pretty good season with the White Sox in 2005, going 15-7 with a 3.61 ERA and helping them to win the World Series. Perhaps the worst thing about his tenure with the Yankees was how poorly he pitched in the postseason. He appeared in just eight games, going 0-2 with an ERA of almost six, losing crucial games in the American League Championship Series of 2003 and in the World Series. Number three, there are almost no words for how bad Ki Igawa was. The only reason he's not higher on this list is because he didn't make a ton of money. After signing a four-year, $20 million contract to come from Japan, Egawa appeared in just 16 games, going 2-4 with a devilish 6.66 ERA in 71 and two-thirds innings, striking out just 53 and walking 37. He allowed an obnoxious 15 home runs and posted a collective war of negative 0.5. Terrible. Number two, Carl Pavano. Carl Pavano signed a four-year, $39.95 million contract in 2004 after having a career year with the Florida Marlins. Pavano actually started off pretty strong, going 4-2 in his first 10 starts and throwing a shutout, but then he suffered a shoulder injury, and then he hurt his butt, and then he got into a car wreck, and then he had some other kind of weird bruise or ailment or Tommy John surgery or headache or paper cut or whatever, and he just wouldn't get on the field. When it was all said and done, over those four years, Pavano was just nine and eight with a five ERA and appeared in just 26 games, pulling off one of the great money heists of all time. And number one, Jacoby Ellsbury. Now, Jacoby Ellsbury wasn't always terrible, and he is the freshest one, so perhaps this is a little biased on my part. 
but he signed a seven-year, $153 million deal just before the 2014 season. But aside from setting a major league record for most catchers' interference, Jacoby really didn't do jack with the Yankees and was ultimately released before the final season of his contract. There's one thing that's sure to aggravate Yankees fans. It's when guys get paid a ton of money and then can't even suit up to take the field. Jacoby Ellsbury missed all of 2018 and all of 2019 with various ailments. For their $153 million, the Yankees got a total of 9.7 wins above replacement over the seven years and an average of just 74 games played. And like I mentioned, he missed the last two seasons of his contract completely. What a bum. What do you think of this list? As always, like and subscribe, and I'll see you next time.